In this video, we will discuss dual slope analog to digital converters. This is the block diagram of a dual slope analog to digital converter. The diagram consists of three operational amplifiers A1, A2, and A3. Control logic block to control various switching operations like closing and opening of switch SW2 and changing positions of switch SW1. End stage counter counts clock signals applied to the counter by the control logic. Switch SW1 to connect analog input voltage and reference voltage to input of the buffer amplifier and switch SW2 for auto zeroing. Operational amplifier A1 is connected as a buffer amplifier with voltage gain unity. Operational amplifier A2 is connected as a precision integrator and op amp A3 is connected as a comparator. The function of the control logic is to generate control and status signals. The end stage counter counts clock signals fed by the control logic. Switch SW1 is used to connect ground analog input signal VA and reference voltage minus VR to the input of the buffer amplifier. Switch SW2 is used for auto zero feature. Principle of operation of the circuit. Basically, there are two phases in the operation of the circuit. Initially, switch S1 will connect analog input signal VA to the input of the integrator during phase 1. So, VA is integrated for a fixed duration 2 raised to n into T, where T is the time period of one cycle of the clock signal. After completion of Counting 2 raised to n clock pulses, switch SW1's position is changed to connect reference voltage minus VR to the input of the integrator and it is integrated for n cycles till output of the integrator becomes zero. So, count of the n stage counter during phase two. When reference voltage is connected to the buffer amplifier is the digital equivalent of the analog signal applied. Now let us consider the working of the circuit. Before the application of start signal, switch SW1 is connected to ground and switch SW2 is in closed condition. Any offset voltage present at the output of A1 and A2 appears across the capacitor CAZ as switch SW2 is in the closed condition. This voltage across the capacitance acts as a threshold voltage for the comparator A3. When switch SW2 is opened, this voltage across the capacitance acts as a memory to nullify the offset voltage of A1 and A2. So, before the application of start pulse, that means before T is equal to T1, input of the buffer amplifier is connected to ground. At T is equal to T1, when start signal is applied, switch SW1 is connected to analog input voltage VA and switch SW2 is opened. End stage counter starts counting. The n bit counter counts 2 raised to n clock signals and analog input signal VA is integrated during this period. The output of the integrator is a negative going ramp.
so when start signal is applied analog voltage va is connected to the input of the buffer amplifier as shown in the figure from the diagram we can find that switch sw1 connects the analog input signal va to the input of the buffer amplifier so during this phase the end stage counter counts two raised to n clock signals once count of the end stage counter reaches 1111 all ones end stage counter is reset at the end of t1 n bit counter resets to zero at this instant switch sw1 connects reference voltage minus vr to the input of the integrator through buffer amplifier output of the integrator v0 is a positive going ramp the reference voltage minus vr is integrated as long as output of the integrator is negative so look at the diagram so during phase 2 at t is equal to t2 the switch sw1 changes its position to connect reference voltage minus vr to the input of the buffer amplifier so during this phase control logic sends clock signals to the end stage counter end stage counter counts as soon as the output of the precision integrator turns positive control logic will sense this change in output of the precision integrator and uh, control logic stops sending clock signal to the end stage counter and uh, control logic will set end of conversion signal as high so count of the n bit counter is the digital value which is equivalent to the analog voltage va so now coming to the analysis part for an integrator change in voltage can be written as dv0 is equal to minus 1 by rc v in dt so between t1 and t2 v in is equal to analog input signal va therefore we will get dv0 is equal to minus 1 by rc va into t2 minus t1 so during the time intervals t1 and t2 input signal v in is equal to va similarly between time instance t2 and t3 dv0 can be written as change in output voltage dv0 is equal to minus 1 by rc into minus vr into t3 minus t2 so this is the output of the integrator when analog input signal va is connected to the buffer amplifier and this is the output of the integrator when reference voltage minus vr is connected to the input of the buffer amplifier so between t1 and t2 n bit counter counts to raise to n clock signals so time interval between t1 and t2 that is t2 minus t1 can be written as t2 minus t1 is equal to 2 raised to n into t where 2 raised to n is the number of clock pulses counted by the end stage counter and t is the time period of one clock cycle between t2 and t3 counter counts n clock cycles so time interval t3 minus t2 can be written as t3 minus t2 is equal to n into t so dv0 is equal to minus 1 by rc into va into t2 minus t1 similarly we can write dv0 is equal to minus 1 by rc into minus vr into t3 minus t2 equating these two equations we will get 
VA into T2 minus T1 is equal to minus VR into T3 minus T2. So VA into T2 minus T1 is equal to minus VR into T3 minus T2. So rearranging the terms, we will get T2 minus T3 So VA into T1 minus T2 is equal to minus VR into T3 minus T2. So we know that T2 minus T1 is equal to 2 raised to n into T. And T3 minus T2 is equal to n into T. Therefore, we can write VA into 2 raised to n into T is equal to VR into n into T. That is VA into 2 raised to n is equal to VR into n or n is equal to VA into 2 raised to n divided by VR. So here, we got the expression for digital count in terms of analog input signal VA, reference voltage VR, and time taken by the n-bit counter to count from 0, 0, 0, 0, that is all zeros, to 1, 1, 1, 1, that is all ones. Advantages and limitations of dual slope ADC. The major advantage of dual slope ADC is its accuracy for slowly varying signals such as thermocouples and weighing scales. The major drawback of dual slope ADC is its conversion type. Thanks for watching. Circuits Analytica. Enjoy learning.